the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi, and welcome back to the introduction to our course. This is module two, video three, and we are preparing our workspace so we can start working in R. And I'm just gonna start out, I brought up a new browser and I have two tabs open because I'm going to go and search for R software. And then I'm also going to bring up R Studio. R Studio is the integrated development environment for R that many people use in order to interact with R. It is able to create great visualizations and just lays out interacting with R in a very easy to understand manner that will allow you to really be able to just hit the ground running with R without having to learn some complex development environment or dealing with the visualization inabilities in the console. So I'm going to come over here to R software first, and I'm going to click on the link there. And it says that R is a free software environment for statistical computing and graphics. It compiles and runs on a wide variety of Unix, Windows, and Mac OS. And to download it, we're going to click here. And then we're going to choose which one of these. So we want to choose the crayon mirror that is closest to us. I am here in North Carolina, so Duke University has the closest crayon mirror to me. Then we're going to come over here to the download and install. I'm going to click on download R for Windows because I have a Windows machine. Since you'll be downloading it for the first time, you're going to click for this base option to install R for the first time. And you're going to click download R and then whichever version is out at the time of your installation. And then it'll go ahead and start downloading. You can click on the executable file once it finishes and then follow through the instructions on your installing program in order to have R installed on your computer. Then I'm going to come over here to R Studio. There's a free version of R Studio and there's also a paid version. We are just going to go with the free open source version of R Studio. And so we're going to click here to download R Studio desktop. And we are then going to choose the free version here. The RStudio website is smart and it knows which system I am using. I'm using a Windows. And so I go ahead and click on the download RStudio for Windows. This ex executable file comes up down here. Go ahead and click on that once it's finished and follow your installation wizard to install RStudio on your computer. And then you'll be able to interact with RStudio easily on your desktop just for you. And if you have any questions about the installation, you can also look at the frequently asked questions for R. And also R Studio has a great frequently asked questions page that you can find with their support section. And also if you just go and look online, if you search in Google for the installation issue you're having, there is definitely plenty of resources out there for you to use to solve your problem. So I look forward to seeing you next time and we'll go through how R Studio is great for interacting with R in our next video. Welcome back to the introduction to R. This is module two, video four. We are going to go through R Studio and I'm gonna tell you all about how to use it, what are the amazing features about R Studio, how to install a package, how to use a library once you've installed that package and how to run a line of code in R. So starting out with the beginnings and we're getting ready to finally get our feet wet in using R. As you bring up R on your computer, this is what you're going to see. The 
console here over on the left side and it's talking about the version you're going to have a newer version of r most likely and it tells you a little bit about the warranty if you're also looking to have a demo you can go ahead and type in demo there or if you would like help for any help as well it gives you a little options for that over here on the right side You've also got the files that you will be looking at that depend on which folder you are in. So that is all of the files that I have in, in this current directory that I am in. It also gives me a plot. We will talk about how to create plots later in the course. It also gives me all of the packages that I have. Many packages come pre-installed with RStudio and R. However, there are several that you will have to install yourself. And then it also gives you a help tab over here on the right side, which is really great because if you ever need to look up any documentation on a package or wondering what a function does or anything like that, you can easily just type in here into the search bar or if you ever have a question about some package that you're using you can always just press the question mark and then type in whichever package and you'll be able it will show up over on the right side for the help and data frames come up over here so you don't have to go all the way to a browser to go check it out. You can easily just look at it right here in RStudio, which makes it really, really nice to be able to answer any quick question that you have. You don't have to go somewhere else to another window, possibly get distracted. So it makes it very nice in that way. Also up here, we have the environment. The environment is very nice to use, especially after you start saving variables. And we'll talk more about how to assign a variable and use variables in the next video. The global environment is very nice. If you ever forget what a variable was that you saved as or anything like that, the global environment will be up there and ready for you, showing you exactly what variables you have saved. It also shows you a history of all the different things that you've done in R. What I would suggest in starting out, come over here to the right side start a new project. It's going to ask whether I want to start a brand new working directory. It's going to ask whether I want to create an existing directory or work from a project that's already in a version control repository. So like GitHub, I'm just going to, going to start with the new directory and you can create a new package easily right here in our studio, which is really nice. You can also create shiny web applications and each of these other tools as well. I'm just going to start out with the basics of starting a new project here. And then you name your project and I'm just going to name this example. And then you gotta choose where you would like to place that project and which directory you would like to put it in. And then you're gonna go and click on create project. That is going to create an environment that will be used every single time you start the project. I have worked with people in the past who haven't had their project set up and it makes a situation where you have some packages installed elsewhere and our studio doesn't know where they are and isn't able to access them and then it's all over the place. So. The best way to be able to do this is always start fresh with a new project and then come back to that R project so you're able to access all of those scripts and everything that you use right here in the project and it's got it all saved there for you all in one place. From that, you're probably wondering, oh, what was a script? You mentioned the script. Well, a script, that is where you're going to type in your code and be able to save it for later. If you notice here, I had code that was written here when I did the question mark for the data frame and it's no longer there. Anything put into the console doesn't get saved. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to save it into an R script. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here, R script. And this is where you're going to do most of your work. 
in R is in the R script. The console is great if you want to do a quick calculation or something that you don't want to save. It makes it really easy here. Like, say I just wanted to figure out, okay, what's 5 plus 9? I could easily do that right here. And we'll talk more about calculations in a later video. But first, you will need to name your R script. So I'll go up here to File, and you can click Save As. And it'll be going into wherever you save that R project. Here comes your example script. So I'm just going to name it example script.r and click save. It'll be able to save it there for me as example script. And it's over here on the right side as well. You see it comes up in files. It's really easy to be able to see where everything is and keep track of everything all in our studio. Now, the last thing that I'm going to show you here during this video is how to install a package. Like I was mentioning in a previous video, a package is a set of functions that somebody has written to perform a certain process and you are able to take those functions and bring it into your code, be able to use it for your application, which you need to do that. We're going to come down here and we're going to click type in install packages. Then you need to put quotation mark, type in whatever package you are trying to install. I'm going to type in carrot, which I mentioned in a previous video as well. It was very good for classification or regression machine learning algorithms. I will hit enter in order to execute that line and it's going to install the package for me after it is finished installing. It will say package carrot successfully unpacked and check. Even though I have installed this package, it is not ready for me to be able to use yet. In order for me to be able to actually use that package, I have to tell R, hey, bring this in. I will then type in here library and I'm going to say carrot. Then in order to execute that line, I have several options. Hit the run button up here in the top right corner. I can highlight the line and I can hit the run button as well. Or I can use the control enter in order to run that line. Once that comes up, you might see a few warning messages. There's always going to be a few messages in red for most libraries as they will bring up packages that they also loaded in or functions that they have overwritten based on whether they actually have another function in their package that overwrites one of the other packages you already have loaded. It may do that. It may mask other packages, functions, but it may not. That is how you set up your RStudio environment and everything about RStudio and also how to install a package and bring that package in so you can actually read it into your environment, actually use it with the library function. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next time. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.